We're going to go through tons and tons of examples. I want you at each point, I'm going to put up something and I want you to draw up a really quick argand diagram because we're going to go through these fairly rapidly. We're going to talk about ways we can describe geometric shapes that we have been dealing with since stage five but on an Argan diagram. And Mr. Wu gave you a little sampler of that the other day when he told you we have a new and better and much simpler way of writing the equation of a circle. And we'll come across those in a minute. But I want to start with some. So as I said, lots and lots of examples. I'm not going to insist that these are massive ones, although I'm so impressed that's not funny. I'm going to suggest you need about, if you have an A4 booklet, you want about three horizontally, you probably want two columns, so have them about that sort of size. So about six to a page. Start drawing your argand diagrams. You're going to need spaces to label them. PTSD. All right, PTSD, good. All right, I'm going to run through these relatively quickly. The first thing I want to mention is this word locus. We do not use locus anymore, it's been removed from the syllabus, but it's such a fantastic word. Locus just means a rule that describes a set of points that, uh, uh, sorry, a rule that describes a path that a point travels. So for example, if I have my blue pen and it is currently at zero, zero. It's going on a journey. And the journey it's going on is this. It's a circle. But if I described a circle geometrically, what we would say is that it is a point that is always equidistant from a centre. Agreed? It never moved away from me, even though I turned and I'm a little dizzy now. But it is a point that is always equidistant away from a centre. That is a locus. We can then describe a locus geometrically, a point that is always equidistant from a centre, or algebraically, x squared plus y squared equals however long my arm is squared. Agreed? So we have algebraic descriptions and we have geometric descriptions. And today, although we're going to dabble in a little bit of algebra, we're really going to stick solidly in graphs. Okay? So you should not need to delve into your algebra brain for much of this at all. When we extend it on Friday, we're going to start bringing some of the algebra back in. And then we extend you to harder ones next week. You're definitely going to need to decide whether to use algebra or graphs. I today want to say to you, you can answer really complex questions just with a graph. Let's start with a nice simple one. If I have imaginary z equals 4, can anyone think what this is going to look like? A straight line. I've written it there. What's it? Horizontal, vertical? Horizontal, passing through? 4. I will reiterate horizontal passing through at 4. It's not 4i, it's 4. Just to reiterate. Do I include the points on the line? Yeah. Duh. Yeah. Come on, you're like, of course you do. We happy with that one? Have we drawn up a picture? Yeah. We're going to get more complicated. Let's ramp up. If I have that real z is greater than 2, what is this going to look like? It's a region. Where's my boundary? Two. Two. Do I include my boundary? No. no. So, draw it up. You should be drawing it up almost faster than me because I had to select my pen. And I want a region. So, this is where I say thank you to Mr. Wu for teaching me this trick yesterday. Hey, cheating. Oh, wow. Genius. I did not include these points. So it should be some sort of dotty line. 
Okay, it needs to be clearly labelled and I'm on this side because if I do a test, which seems a bit silly for this nice easy one, three is obviously greater than two. Zero, not so much. All right. Sometimes we combine those. Have a go. I'm going to give you 30 seconds head start. My real Z is between minus one and three inclusive. And my imaginary Z is between zero and two inclusive. You'll note that my, uh, again, diagrams have all been pre-populated. All right. Samarth, you ready? Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Yeah. I love yes. Yeah. So if you had extra lines drawn, for example, a lot of you might have decided to draw the extra lines in um, vertically, and that's absolutely fine, but everything outside this region would have to be dotted. So sometimes it's just easier for us not to bother. Okay, so we would have to do dotty lines for all of those. Agreed? <laughs> all right, now this one is another region. I know this because it is a greater thans and less thans. It's talking about the argument and what do we know the argument is? It is a? An angle from where? Not just the origin. It's not an angle from the origin because the origin's a point. It has no angles. Origin to the positive real axis. Agreed? And it's a rotation. I'm going to push on you a second before you all start drawing diligently because if you're anything like me, you now have something that looks like that, except filled, right? I'm going to ask you just to pause and have a think. And yes, Emmanuel's going, I know the answer. Oh, I don't get to change that one. What do we know about? What do we know about arg zero? Arg zero. What's the arg zero? What is it? It is undefined. Somewhere on this diagram, you need to write a note and you need to say arg zero is undefined. That means at zero, you must draw an empty circle. So when you're drawing this up, at the origin, we need an empty circle and an obviously empty circle. You can then draw up your line. You can then show me your angle because you need to show me detail. And you can then go and color it in. All right, I'm about to put it up or rather I'm about to do a big reveal. Again, copying Mr. Wu's techniques. Yes. Something like this one, which is very satisfying somehow, isn't it? <laughs> Do I need to? I, yes, yes, I probably should. So yes, I should probably add in an angle label. So I could put in. All right, we good. Uh, I can just in this instance, do you have to label another angle that is the bottom line with the horizontal axis? The because bottom line. line so you're suggesting that I do pi on six here? Yeah, as well. And then a line and pi on six there. Uh, or you can just just do the pi three. What do we add from having another? And there's no pro problems doing it, but what, do we, what is added from that that was missing before? The, the bottom line with the horizontal uh, axis. Yeah, with the, with the real axis. <laughs> Ooh, the I'm on first. I'm not doing anything. 
So what's added there that is, oh, so you're saying this could go anywhere? Oh, I think because of the, I'm being reasonably accurate, but yes, you could probably do that as well. Come on, frozen again. All right, next. This is where my iPad comes in handy. So that's straight lines, regions, all sorts of things. We good? Our next ones that we're going to look at are circles. Now, Mr. Wu gave us the other day our very first and most basic circle. And so what he, uh, what he drew was, pressing that, this circle. And he said that this one, by definition, my modulus or my distance from Z at the origin was always two. So what circle did this end up being? Circle with radius two. Good. So we draw up circle with radius two. Magic. <laughs> of course, just like everything in maths, we rarely leave well enough alone. So we've gone from our angles. <laughs> the next thing we do is move it center. So for your next one, I'm moving it center. It's right down the bottom here. If you give me 30 seconds, I'll make it so it can come up. And I've also turned it into... I've also turned it into a region. Here we go. I've also turned it into a region. So I've made it, it's still a circle because now it's saying, here's the geometric description. The distance of Z from where? From one, thank you, is always less than two. So the distance of Z from one is always less than two. So I know it's a circle. I've given you geometric descriptionly where its center is. We don't judge you on the quality of your circles, trust me. Doesn't look like a circle. We do judge you on your labeling. Hints, hints. Am I including the boundary? No. No, I'm not including the boundary. The next thing I have to ask myself is, am I inside or am I outside? Inside. I'm inside. <laughs> Again, cheating. You can see the next one coming up. So if you want to get ahead, the next one is there. And this one actually required a bigger diagram, so you be a bit careful with your labelling. Alright, I'm looking at the time and I haven't really, well, although you've been all working really well. Alright, ready? Big reveal. So this one is a big circle, it is the circle, it's not a region. It actually ends up being quite large. It's got a center, three minus four. Notice I factorized, and a radius five. Uh, accidentally, if, you di if my diagram is so bad and, uh, and, and I didn't process the origin, will you, will you get that? Oh, if you didn't marked. cross the origin? Yeah. Well, yeah, it, because it's three, four, or five, I possibly, but the short answer is not normally. What's important, What's important is to um, show roughly where the intercepts are. Now, I know mine is super accurate because that's what you can do on an iPad. Um, <laughs> but I would want to know if you were this side of the origin or that side of the origin. So being on the origin, I kind of, yeah, do want to know that that's there. And we get that because we, it's a three, four, five triangle. But I just want to show you a few more other circles first. Are we ready? Bear with me. You don't need to, you can copy these down, 
but we'll go a bit quicker. If I combine a region with a circle, for example, sketch the region where my circle ooh, equals one. Notice my circle equals one, so it should be the whole circle, but it has to be and this section. So it's solid, but only there. It's zero on the um, axis, so it doesn't exist there, and it's solid here. So we've got this region inside, but what I want you to note are those open circles, closed circles, dotted lines, not dotted lines. 